Hello and welcome back to this little tutorial for lightweight PLA printing. Here I want to show you how to print super lightweight and also super stable jets in part one that you can see here. I was talking about the hot end, how it should be and today we want to tune a hot end that it works like it should. Yeah? We want to go to the Anycubic Chiron and modify a lot of, of this hot end that it works as well as we need it. First of all, I want to say thank you to all the guys of you that are supporting this channel and these projects. I really appreciate it. And if you are new to this channel and you say, oh yes, I want to support this because I want to that this project go far as possible, you will find the links under the description. You can become my Patreon, you can donate by PayPal or buy me a coffee. And a specialty for my Patreons, today I want to put my Cura print profiles for lightweight PLA printing on my Patreon site. So if you want to print also these, these nice jets and we're looking for a good profile, you will find it there. Yeah? So there are enough reasons for you to support this channel and become my Patreon. But now I want to say, let's start. So in this video I want to show you how to make this Anycubic Chiron. Make it ready for lightweight PLR printing. There we have to change a lot on, on this hot end, on this um, print head. Problem is that through these holes there can't get enough air to the hot end to cool it enough. The print re result with the lightweight PLA is not so good. Even here with the cooling you can see most of the area is uh, blocked um, by this metal so we want to remove this metal and also we want to take a look in here because the air that comes in also has to go through and this we have to tune up to remove the connectors this red and black is for the switch for the end switch here we got the thermistor this big connector right here is for the hot end for the heating patron so and now this the housing is free and we just have these two connectors for the fans now I'm marking the position of the fans for reassembling later on this fan is here, this fan is here, and this one was about here. It's also important for look to the names. The first one is fan 0 and this is fan 2. And fan 0 is this, so I put on a 0 here. Yeah, there's a 0, this is fan 0. And here is a 2, fan 2. And here we can see how much area is blocked uh, by metal and that's why uh, just about a third from the air that would be possible um, with this uh, fan is uh, just sucked in yeah so and now we want to remove this Edges has to be deburred 
For this I use this tool. So now it looks like this and the fan fits also really nice. Yeah, the other hole isn't perfect round, but um, nevertheless, <laughs> it should work. So the housing is ready modified. The next is removing this part. This is the holder for the uh, leveling. And um, yeah, this is not needed, but it blocks a lot of air that comes from here, from the fan and has to go along and then up down and here you see this area is blocked. On the other side there's the second fan um, and so this has to be removed. At this point we can also change the silicone sock. This is the old one and that's the new one and the difference is that it goes much more over the uh, nozzle itself. Yeah? So this is um, isolating the nozzle much better. The installation is also super easy. Just put it in here and it fits. So now it's time for reassembling the fans. putting on I make sure that this big cable is not uh, directly in front of the fan because it would also block the, block the airflow so I put it a little bit to the side. Last step is putting on this cable tie. Yeah, I put it here over this tape. Here it is a bit re reinforced this cable. Put it there. So after we have modified the printer, we want to take a look to the results. And right here, I installed um, a special camera with a macro objective. And there we can get super close to the part and take a look to the print surface. And uh, let's see what is the difference before and after with a silicone sock and without. Let's see. This part is printed with a any cubic Chiron without modifying and we can see the surface is quite uneven. Uh, there are tails and hills and this and some holes also. Yeah. We can see this is not the best quality. This is the same part and you can see the surface is not the best. This is one of the first tries and Let's go to the next. Here we got a vertical stabilizer from the Harrier. And this one is printed with a modified Chiron. And let's see how this looks like under our microscope. This is already a grinder with 120 grit so that we can see the print surface itself. But we can see it looks much, much better than before. The rudder is printed with an ender which works originally very nice and there are no differences in the surface quality. So it's also possible with the Chiron to get superb results. Here we got a ducting. This is printed by Ziggy with a flash forge printer. And let's see how this looks like. On this part we can see clearly the uh, layers, the print layers. And it also looks a bit uneven, but nevertheless, this is good quality. I think there can also be some fine tuning that the uh, tails between these layers are not so deep. Then there's also the adhesive between them much better and the whole part becomes more stable. But all over, this looks quite good. The next part is a fresh printed 
Harrier elevator. Uh, it comes immediately from the printer now. And first, it looks really nice. And let's see how it looks under the microscope. This is the elevator from the Hornet, from the artillery Hornet. We also can see lightly the layers and some little tails, but all over this is really good quality and after a little grinding this will be super even. Next part is this elevator. This is printed with the Creality CR10 Max, one of my favorite printers. Let's see how this looks like in detail. This is the CR10 Max elevator and this is a slightly grinded but we can see this is a superb quality. We can see slightly the layers, but no tails, really not uneven. This is a superb quality. And when there is a bit more grinding, it is um, super even and perfectly for painting. So let's see if we can see a difference between CR10 Max on the left and CR10 V3 on the right. Yeah, there are little bit differences, some slightly tails and the uh, print layer structure is a little bit more uneven, but nevertheless, these two printers are really, really nice just from the beginning. Yeah, there's not so much tuning necessary. So let's go to the next part. These are the slicer print settings and I'm using always a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. There's on all printers the same. Yeah. Uh, the, the print temperature is not the same. This starts on 210 degree on the Anycubic Chiron. Then it goes a bit up at the uh, Artillery Hornet with 226 degree. And on all my Crualities, the Ender, the CR10 and the CR10 Max, I'm printing with 242 degree. Yeah? The bed temperature is from 50 to 60 degree. Yeah? This depends on your print bed. Yeah? The print speed is always 30 mm per second. With this speed I got the best results. And my layer high is 0.2 mm. At 0.4 we can see a cut through through the layers. Yeah? This is the, the worst result when we got two ropes that just stick on this little area. Then they are not bonding good together and the part can easily break along the layer. Here it looks a little bit better. Not bonding good together and the part can easily break along the layer. Here it looks a little bit better. Yeah, we can see the um, bonding area is increasing and this is the best result. This is the, the result we want to have that there is not a round layer. The layer should be pressed a little bit flattened that the as adhesive area or the bonding area is big as possible. Also this gap between them is not so deep so with a little bit grinding we can reach a super even and flat area which can be painted in the next step. Okay this was it for this video. If you want to support my channel you can do this by becoming a Patreon or donating on PayPal or buy me a coffee. All the links you will find under the descriptions. I already put my Cura Lightweight PLA printing profiles onto my Patreon site. Yeah. On my Patreon site you can find besides a lot of photos and behind the scenes material my Cura Lightweight PLA print profiles for the printer I'm using, the Creality printers, the Artillery Hornet and the Anycubic Chiron that you can also get very good results on your project. In the next video we will dive much deeper into Cura and take a look what is necessary to print these big jets with only one outer layer. Uh, this becomes much more difficult as much bigger your part is getting. Uh, but uh, there are a lot of settings in Cura that makes this possible anyway. Yeah? And this is I want to show you in the next one. So have a great day and see you. Bye bye.